A great video for you tonight, which we're going to be taking a look at the Lingstar Triple Fan Laptop Cooler. It can hold 12 inches up to 17 inch laptops. So first a little bit of spec information, like I just said, it's got a USB hub, a little bit of RGB, three axial fans, RPM for those fans, maxes out at 1500 RPM, and it's height adjustable. Now this is my raw data. I'm showing it early on because I've done a number of well, laptop trays and cooling fans. If you're new to this channel, I am very data focused. So I like collecting it and then I'm going to compare it. I'm going to have at the end of basically all the testing, I'm going to have a comparison video at the end comparing all the laptop trays against each other and put it against the stand and kind of let you know which one I think is the best to go with. If you got questions, comments, concerns about any of the graphs, ask me and I'll go ahead and try to answer it as best of my ability. Um, I know this video is a bit long because we're covering a lot of data. Let's get right into it. Let's take a quick look at the Langstar BM11. The packaging is basically non existent, just a little bit of foam sheet. And you know what? It's fine. It's got USB powered and it has a USB C port. Sorry, I know that was upside down. So I don't understand why they didn't just put another USB A because this is gonna be just operating at USB 2 speeds anyways. Uh, these fans are USB powered, so don't expect them to be static pressure, high powered things. You got light control and you got fan control. It's really simple to operate. First time on is the fans at speed, push again, they're at half speed, push again, they're at low speed and I think off. So very basic functionality. It's got a USB A cable little rubber feet, you know, just two level kickstand right there. And the rubber feet on it, you know, it's fine. It creates, you know, pretty good angle overall. Uh, personally, my, um, the, the just stand I use does do a steeper angle, but you know what, this is fine. And then that would actually improve the efficiency of these fans as well. No filters, so dust will definitely be kicked up into your fans and will definitely be kicked up into here, so um, a little bit hard to clean. Build quality, well, there's a little bit of flex, but you know what? This is fine. Comes with a built-in stand. It's just a stamped piece of metal. Um, screwed into place. If you I suppose if you had done enough fans, you could swap those out. But you know what? It's adequate. The first laptop is the Asus U303 ZenBook. It is quite an old machine by uh, today's standards. It's got... Now, it does have a 4th gen Intel dual core pulling a maximum of 15 watts, and its GPU uh, is the uh, M840, and that can pull 30 watts. So that's 45 watts total in this package. Now the reason for it, using this from the testing and why it's valid is it's got an aluminum body and I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's a little bit of gray in there where I attached some thermal pads to the heat pipes and attached it to the bottom of the chassis so that there's extra heat dissipation. So this would be a test applicable to let's say a MacBook Air if you did that that mod to it or another laptop that you're applying this mod to where you're just attaching thermal pads to the bottom of it. Now I do want to note that you would not do this on a laptop that you plan to use as a laptop. It would be to be used as a desktop replacement because you're sinking extra heat to the bottom of the chassis and most of the modern laptops have thermal sensors for the bottom of the chassis that keep them from getting too warm to keep them from burning you. So the second laptop here is my Lenovo Yoga C940, and it features Intel Iris G7 graphics before the XE cores came about. It's got a, was it 10th gen quad core, what's it, the 1067, something like that, 65 G7. So big, large vent in it. A lot of the newer ones have an even larger vent, but this is representative of a, again, a metal bottom, no mods, uh, integrated graphics, maximum power draw like around 65 watts, steady state around 45 watts. So it has a good representation for sort of your average everyday type laptops or um, 
maybe lower end, lower heat use case, dual heat pipe, dual fan, that sort of thing. And the last laptop in the testing is my 2021 Zyphus G15 uh, G503, if I do recall the model correctly. And this laptop, and this laptop has two large vents. Uh, was it like five or six heat pipes? I forget the exact orientation. Bottom chassis is plastic. So this is representative of your mid-range standard kind of laptops, plastic bottom chassis, grills to allow the vents to air to escape out the sides and out the back towards the screen, but not a metal bottom chassis. So the other two give us that metal bottom and those effects, while well, this would be that plastic. I'm going to keep reiterating that. So that's the three machines that I'm going to be using for this testing. So modded with a metal bottom, plastic bottom gaming laptop, and an unmodded metal bottom laptop. And, well, hope you enjoy. So the graphs is for the Yoga C940 CPU only running R23. So the green line here is the core clock speed. So obviously it's having an effect on the clock speed and making it more stable. And for the wattage, it's allowing it to run out at that higher wattage, which makes sense. Although interestingly enough, the CPU is running at a higher temperature, but it's maintaining the temperature unlike on the stand and um, on the table where we saw a decrease in clock speed. And a little bit of a simplified view. We got the uh, noise level that it saw. So originally the laptop was at 36 and 38 decibels and it's now up to 44. So it is a fairly significant increase, maybe 50% more noise, but you are getting a pretty sizable increase in performance. So that is up to you if you can justify that. Uh, temperature wise, the green is for the three fan and the other two are for the stand and the desk respectively. And the Delta T, well, we saw an increase in temperature. Uh, even though we saw that increase in temperature, we did see an increase in performance. So overall, it might be justifiable. Moving on to test two for the Yoga C940. This time we're running it with the CPU and the GPU we're running at the same time. So I'm running R23 and Firmark, hitting that poor GP, integrated GPU. And we see a decrease in the CPU clock speed. We also see a decrease in GPU clock speed versus the other tests. However, we don't see the decline. So it's holding flatter. Um, 
even though it's not spiking as high. So mixed results, I'm going to say there. And as for the wattages, well, this green line and this green line, so it isn't running at quite the same wattage. So it is an overall reduction, I would say. And for temperatures, well, they make a lot of sense because they are running uh, less power. They are running cooler. So let's simplify the view. So the clock speeds, we have the CPU wattage, the R23 scores on here, the noise rating, the GPU wattage, and the FPS. So, I mean, technically it's 12 FPS versus on the table, which was 10. So there was an improvement, but it's not really significant. Uh, the average clock speed was a little bit better than on the stand, but not as good as on the desk. I'm gonna call that variance. And same with the GPU clocks, some variance going on there. So overall, I'm going to say net, not much difference. As for the temperatures, well, the green bars here are for the three fan. And well, the temperatures are cooler, but the performance is negligible difference. So maybe it's a win. But if we take a look at the Delta T, no meaningful difference as compared to the stand or versus the stand uh, with the being on the desk as the baseline. Now we're taking a look at the Zyphus G15 R23 and Fermark test combined. So we have the CPU clock and the GPU clock. Moving on, we got the temperatures. So obviously there was a pretty good decrease in the temperatures as compared to the baseline tests. Um, the wattages were spot on. So that's good result. A little bit of a simplified graph. So we got the three fan, we got the uh, R23 score, the wattage, the FPS that I read, and the GPU wattage. So there was not much difference there. Uh, the clock speeds on the GPU were basically right in line. The CPU clock speeds were right in line. A little bit of variation, but nothing crazy, I would say. Okay, keeping uh, that same thought in line. We have the temperatures. So the stand actually made the laptop cooler than this uh, three fan cooling tray, despite uh, having the same wattage about. So uh, laptops are weird to test sometimes. And if we look at the Delta T's, well, there wasn't as much of a temperature decrease running this test. So this is one where just having open, open access to air the laptop might be doing better than putting it on a cooling tray. Next test for the G15 is Fire Strike, and this is the full 3D Mark run. It's really hard to see anything, so let's keep it moving. There are the wattages. Looks like it's allowing it to spike a little bit higher, but let's keep things moving, the thermals, and now for the simplified view. So these are the different FPSs for the runs, uh, doing the desk in blue, the stand in orange, and the three fan in green. So not much difference, although I will say for that GPU test one FPS, there was about a five uh, FPS drop as compared to the other tests. So that does affect the overall score, but overall I call it run to run variance. I also want to note on here temperatures. So the average GPU temperature did not change very much and the average CPU temperature also did not change. Uh, that's down here in the key. The next test was for the G15 running the Shadow of the Tomb Raider um, benchmark. And they all look kind of right in line with each other. No real surprises. So let's keep things moving. The thermal results, again, they're pretty close overall. Let's keep things moving, keep that simplified view. So we got the average GPU, max GPU, average CPU, max GPU, or CPU, and the FPS. So this one had 101 FPS, while the others were 104, 103, but it's pretty close overall. Um, no real surprises in terms of the temperatures. If we take a look at the Delta T, well, it's actually running a little bit warmer than on the stand, but it's cooler than putting on the desk. So the next laptop is the ZenBook U303, and we got the CPU wattage, <clears throat> and... Um, no change, we got the CPU clock speed, no real change, and we got the GPU clock, no change. Now, there was some drop in temperature, as it would appear. Let's keep things moving. 
the R23 plus for mark, clock speed, and GPU. GPU had no changes, so there was a little bit of a bump up in clock speed, which is good to see. FPS was holding steady, and the R23 score. So it did increase by a little bit. Keep in mind, this is only dual core laptop, so we're not expecting some very high scores. But the noise level did increase by several decibels. I would say about 50% more noise. The temperature results, well, this uh, cooling tray had a significant impact on this laptop with its modified bottom where I sunk the heat into that shell. So it really helped there, unlike in many of the other laptops that we tested, or the other two laptops, not many. And we see that in the Delta T results. If we keep things going and going to the three mark fire strike test, well, no change in FPS, a little bit of reduction in the physics score, no change in GPU, no change in CPU. And now comparing the Delta T's, uh, across the three different laptops used. We got the Yoga, the ZenBook in the middle, and the U303 on the right side here. For the Yoga, no real change in uh, in that Delta T for a very small increase in performance. For the ZenBook, a small, smaller than putting it on a stand, improvement in um, temperatures. So it's better than putting it directly on a table, but no performance increase here. And if we take a look at the U303, a very small performance increase with a significant drop in temperatures, again, with a modified bottom. So my conclusion here with this $18 cooling tray is spend the $15 and buy a stand. It, in general. So a gaming laptop, it's next to useless. And these, the other two laptops, well, unless you're going to mod out your laptop, then maybe, I guess. But um, your regular laptop, just put it on a stand. It gives it easier access to air. If you really want extra cooling on it, put a PC fan behind it and blow air at the back of it. Especially if you have your own desktop, any amount of airflow that you blow behind it, or your desk fan. So it kind of blows past it. That would be the extra cooling. Uh, so I don't really see this as a useful device. Uh, but that is my opinion. If you like this product and would like to use it, by all means, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it, which is good to say. Uh, now as we're wrapping up, if you've got uh, constructive criticisms for me on ways I can improve my videos, please leave that in the comment section down below. I'm always trying to improve the videos. If you like the content I'm making, uh, please hit a, give me a like. Uh, think about joining me as a Patreon or a YouTube member. That money does go a long way. This channel is completely unsponsored, so it's just me reviewing products, paying for them out of my own pocket, trying to make great content for all of you. Uh, so I appreciate it if you are able to well, help support this channel in that way. Uh, anyways, um, if you got product ideas or tests that you'd like to see me perform in the future, please leave that in the comment section down below. I will see if I can generate a test or review that kind of product. Anyways, thank you very much for joining me here on Computer Tech and More, and I hope you have a great day.